Come and join us here at New Rochelle, where we embrace new growth and new possibilities. New Rochelle is an active church which express the Word of God and practice the Word of God. The thing that's most appealing about New Rochelle Church is the warmth of the people. You're going to find, if you come here, that you feel like you're a part of a family. What I like about New Rochelle, it's as if the church is in constant reflection. For an ultimate experience, you have to come to the New Rochelle Seventh-day Adventist Church, where the man of God expands on the Word. We need everyone to come and hear the message that has been prepared for us weekly. Come to New Rochelle Church. particularly the prayer meeting. And on Sabbaths, this is the place to be. You don't want to miss a Sabbath. It's an incredible experience. Why don't you come and fellowship with us? Happy Sabbath, everyone. We are happy to be here to lift up a praise to God. The song says a mighty fortress is our God. Is God your mighty fortress? Just say amen. Amen. Now let's just say a word of prayer and we're going to begin. Dear God, we thank you for bringing us into your sanctuary this morning to worship you, O oh God. As we sing, let us lift our voices so that we can tune our hearts to be present in worship today. Thank you and we praise you. In your name I do pray. Amen. The song says, A mighty fortress is our God. Hymn number 506.
to see so many faces here this morning. Happy Sabbath to you guys on Zoom, Facebook, and YouTube. Happy, happy Sabbath. Today is a special Sabbath, correct? It's a special Sabbath, right? Every Sabbath is a special Sabbath. But yes, but today is even more special because today we have our installation of our new pastor, Pastor Dalding and Sister Dalding. We are so excited to see you guys later on today. But we have a few announcements. We have some birthday celebrants that celebrated this week. So we want to give another happy birthday to Sister um, Stephanie Highland. I don't see her this morning, but happy birthday again, Sister Highland. Sister Monte, happy birthday to you as well. And we also had Rebecca Romulus that celebrated her birthday this week, so happy birthday to you as well. And to whomever I missed, happy birthday. And happy anniversary to whoever is celebrating their anniversary as well. Um, the pantry, the food pantry, those who are leading the cause and feeding the community, they are requesting some help. So please, if you have some time on Sundays, they would re really appreciate your help. On Sundays from 10.30, Brother Myrie, 10.30? Yes, 10.30, if you can come out on Sundays and help them, they'd really appreciate it. Um, they do help the community, they do serve the community very, very well. Um, I believe it's 12 to 2 that they do um, provide food to the community. So if you can help prep with them at 10.30, to roughly two o'clock, they'd really appreciate it. That's on Sundays. Um, again, we have our pastor is going to be installed today. We have a beautiful Sabbath um, ready for today with our first elder. Uh, but I have something for you, of course, elder. <laughs> so what kind of lights did they use on the ark? What kind of lights did they use on the ark, on Noah's ark? Floodlights, yes, yes. Family, you get 100 points. Good job. <laughs> so floodlights, yes. And if you didn't get it, you'll get it on Tuesday. Good job, good job. So Elder, first Elder, it's straight to you. Thank you, Chi-Chi. Thank you so much. Floodlights, I don't think I'll forget that. That's very good. Floodlights. Happy Sabbath, church. All right. It is so good to see each and every one of you. You know, as I was standing here and Chi-Chi was talking and I was looking out in the crowd, there are so many people here, each and every last one of you, that make me smile. But today I have the privilege to be able to uh, reintroduce to you a brother of mine who I've known since I was in, I think it was, was it 10th grade, Neil? Say that again? Before that? The 11th grade. Okay, yes. Yeah, so. Uh, Neil, just wave your hand there. Uh, we've been friends since we were in the 10th grade. And I'll tell you why that is so significant. It is on that day that the Lord allowed us to become friends and we became members of the same church. So I'm so grateful today to be able to say, welcome again, Neil. Good to see you. Thank you for being here today. Also, Elder Wogu, it is so good to see you. Many of you who know or many of you who might not know, Elder Wogu was sick and he was in the hospital for some time, but today, Elder Wogu, I'm gonna ask you to stand. Under his own power, he gets to stand and he's in church today. Praise the Lord, praise the Lord. So it's good to be in the house of the Lord today. God has blessed us to have a new pastor. And in, at the right time, we're gonna install him. So we're very grateful today for what God is doing for the New Rochelle Southern Adventist Church. How many of you can attest to the fact, how many of you can attest to the fact that God is good? God is so good. And the reason why that is so very important is because he never fails. He's consistent all the way across the board. Now today, it is, all, it is a bitter but sweet day. So it is sweet because we get our new pastor. 
It's a little bitter because one of our family members is relocating, and today is their last Sabbath. Rose, I'm going to ask you to stand up there. Today is Rose's last Sabbath here in church, and Rose has served the church over 35 years. And she doesn't look like she has, does she? She's looking good. So we are grateful to the Lord for what he's done through her and with her for, the, for over 35 years of this church. So when you get at the end of church, do as much as you can to touch her because we are going to do it for the last time for a while. God bless you, Sister Rose, our sister. So we are going to continue our service. God is going to bless, and we're going to have a wonderful time in Jesus. What do you say? Happy Sabbath, happy Sabbath, happy Sabbath. Bread for trash. Adna was a to quarrel with neighbors in Luanda, Angola. But there was one neighbor who refused to quarrel. Every time Adna saw Mary, she yelled. Every time she saw Mary, she tried to pick a quarrel. But Mary only smiled and greeted her joyfully. It's good to see you today, Mary said. May God bless you. Adna couldn't understand why Mary was so happy. She couldn't understand why Mary never yelled or quarreled. Adna yelled louder and tried harder to pick a quarrel. But Mary only seemed to smile more and greet her even more joyfully. It's very good to see you today, Mary said. May God bless you in a very special way. Then Adna had an idea. She often had to pick up garbage that had blown into her yard from the street. So, when she cleaned her yard the next time, she took the bag of garbage and set it beside Mary's front gate. Mary didn't complain. She didn't say a word. She picked up the bag of garbage and took it down the street to the big trash container. Then she returned to her house, took something from her kitchen, and brought it to Adna's house. When Adna opened the door, Mary said, It's good to see you today. This bread is for you. She handed Adna a loaf of homemade bread wrapped in a plastic bag. Adna was surprised. But she didn't change her mind. The next time she cleaned her yard, she again set the bag of garbage at Mary's front gate. Mary again picked with the bag and took it to the big trash container. Then she came to Adna. It's good to see you today, she said. This bread is for you. The story repeated itself again and again. Adna left bags of garbage at Mary's gate, and Mary brought over bread. On a Sabbath morning, Mary came out of her house just as Adna was setting a bag of garbage at the front gate. Mary was dressed up and ready to go to church. Would she be upset? Mary took one look at the bag of garbage and, even though she was wearing her Sabbath clothes, picked it up and carried it in the big trash container. Then she went to Adna's house. It's good to see you today, she said. This bread is for you. As Mary turned to leave, Adna stopped her. She had tears in her eyes. Thank you very much for the bread, she said. But please wait for us. We also want to go to church with you. Mary was surprised. Us, she asked. What do you mean us? My family and I would like to learn to love your Jesus, Adna said. And so it was that Adna and her husband and their four children became Seventh-day Adventists. Why? Mary never shared a Bible verse with them. Mary never spoke to them about God. Mary only showed God's love through her actions. She obeyed Jesus by loving her enemies. Jesus said, But I say to you, love your enemies, bless those who curse you, do good to those who hate you and pray for those who spitefully use you and persecute you, that you may be sons of your Father in heaven. Today, Adna is no longer grumpy. She no longer likes to quarrel. Instead, she smiles at her neighbors and joyfully says, It's good to see you today. May God bless you. Part of this quarter's 13th Sabbath offering will help open an Adventist school in Luanda, Angola, so other children can learn about Jesus.
protection. Oh, and my, my God is. Oh, He is my all and all. God. I've come too far and I'll never 
morning church this is a time when everyone will participate we have us we need a savior and in times like these we need we have one and we encourage to continue support the work of the church by giving returning our tithes and love offering to him we make it possible that you can who, who can donate online by going to www.neurochellesd.org and click on the, the giving button at the bottom of the screen this will this will take you to the Adventist giving page where you can complete the form and give as a guest or create an account you can also give by send give by Zell to the and are sent to the treasury at treasurer new rochelle sd.org you can also give those who are in church we have two white boxes on each side of the church you can give your offering there and your love offering so let us give and give and give till it overflows let us pray our Father, which art in heaven, hallowed be your wonderful name. We thank you for today, your holy Sabbath day, that we can come before your presence to worship and adore your most holy name. As we come, dear Lord, we're asking you to tabernacle with us. Give us a blessing and help us to give and give and give until it hurts, that it overflow and it will go to finish your work in each corner of the world. This is my prayer in Jesus' name. It is now time where we get to talk to the Lord a little bit more personally. Where we get to share with him those things on the innermost parts of our hearts. Those things we can't say out loud. So I'm going to invite you where you are to lift up your voice, your, your, your hearts, your, your mind up unto the Lord. And tell him everything that you can't say out loud. That thing that you can't say to somebody, but you have to say it to somebody. That somebody is our Lord and Savior. And he hears and he answers. possible we may kneel or stand dear Lord in the name of the Savior we come to thee because we love you nothing we bring in our hands except for our sinful selves recognizing Lord that if it wasn't for your shed blood on Calvary we would not be here so we are grateful this morning to know you as God and as our Savior 
I put before you, Lord, the New Rochelle Seventh-day Adventist Church, that as we move forward in a new chapter, that all that you would have us to do will come to fruition, that we will submit ourselves completely unto thee, and that the New Rochelle area would shine even brighter than it has ever before because of the cooperation of heaven and earth. Be with us today as we worship. Be with those who were not able to be here. Those on social media, Lord, watching here today. Let none of us leave without what you promised to give us this day. And that is a blessing from on high. And we pray, Lord, that it would find lodging in our hearts. And that one day our faith will become sight. Those who on our, our, that are on afflicted bed, Lord, will not have a bed to go back to. Those who have bills that they can't pay will not have a bill to go back to. Those who have broken hearts will have a whole heart to reclaim because of you in our lives. So for the many things, Lord, that I don't know about, I ask, Lord, you would answer according to your will. But above all, Lord, above everything else that we ask for, today, Lord, I ask that each and every one of us here will have a home in thy kingdom because of your promise, Lord. So save us for eternity. In the mighty name of Jesus, I pray, and for his sake, amen. Happy Sabbath, everyone. Uh, that was like five people over here and two over on this side. Uh, let's try that one more time. Happy Sabbath, everyone. It is a joy to be with you here in the new Rochelle Seventh-day Adventist Church. Uh, my name is Ainsworth Morris, and I uh, represent the office of the president of the Northeastern Conference. I am delighted to be here today, first to bring uh, greetings on behalf of the conference administrators, uh, Dr. Abraham J. Jules, Executive Secretary, Dr. Eldine King, uh, our CFO and Treasurer, Pastor Robert Chandler, Associate Executive Secretary, Dr. Nicardo Delahaye, and all the departmental directors. Uh, today, all over our conference, our leaders are spread out, uh, carrying out various responsibilities. And as many of you already know, there are several evangelistic campaigns that are taking place throughout the conference. I have been blessed to attend and participate in several of those, and our leaders are fanned out all across the conference giving support to several of these campaigns. Of course, you know Pastor Jules, Dr. Jules, our president, is. Uh, in the midst of an evangelistic campaign in Brooklyn, and uh, there are several campaigns ongoing uh, today. There are a few that will be closing with baptisms, and there are a couple of them that will be starting up this evening. I ask of you that you continue to pray that the mighty move of God will be experienced so that many will come to know him whom to know is life eternal. Now, my brothers and my sisters, uh, it is so good to see those of you in the house. And for those of you who are online, it is a delight to address and to share this moment with you. My task and responsibility this morning, joyfully so, is to uh, install our new pastoral family to this church. I am extremely delighted and I just want to confess right now that your incoming pastor and family are very special to me. When I looked at the list of individuals who were to be installed and I was 
asked where did I want to go, I chose uh, to be here with my longtime friend, your incoming pastor. I've known him for many, many years. I've looked up to him and his leadership, and I am so delighted to be here this morning to uh, undertake this responsibility. Before I present him to you, let me go ahead and make it clear that we want to, uh, from the Northeastern Conference, we want to pause to affirm the ministry of your previous pastoral family, Dr. Greg Baldio, his wife Donnett, and their two sons, Rajon and Javar, for their ministry to this church. Now, in their absence, if you will, join me in a moment of affirmation. If you will, just put your hands together and thank them. They will see this online. We thank God for what they contributed to this church. Now, today, a new era commences for the new Rochelle Church. The conference executive committee, after much prayer and listening to the voice of the Holy Spirit, voted to call your new pastor to this part of God's vineyard. And therefore, I am delighted to present, to introduce, and to install your new pastor and family today, Dr. Sean C. Dowding. Come on, put your hands together for your new and incoming pastor. Now, I know that he is no stranger to this church, having worked in the area, having preached in this very pulpit. But today he comes in a new role. He and his family, they come with their unique background and style to be the servants of God here. You will get to know them uh, over the next uh, years that they will be here, the time that God has allotted for them to be here. But if you will allow me uh, to share a brief narrative of who they are. And let me start with your incoming pastor. Pastor Sean Dowding is a native of Jamaica, West Indies. And I have to say West Indies because uh, many of you may think Jamaica Queens, all right? He is a native of Jamaica, West Indies. And he completed a Bachelor of Arts in Religion in 1991 and graduated with honors from Northern Caribbean University. In 1994, he completed a Master of Arts in Religion and graduated from the Newbold College in England. And during that same year, he also obtained a certificate in basic radio production from the BBC training in London. With his communication training and leadership acumen, Pastor Dowding was called to serve as director of the Adventist radio station in Martinique. This position he held for five years. Pastor Dowding furthered his qualifications in academia completing his doctoral studies in 2005 and graduated with a Doctor of Ministry degree. In 2006, Pastor Dowding was called to ministry in France and served with excellence for 12 years. While carrying out his local pastoral responsibilities, he also served as youth director at the Northern France Conference in Paris for eight years and then as director of the personal ministries department before he was called to serve here in the United States of America. Pastor Dowding recently completed four impactful years at the first Seventh-day Adventist Church in White Plains. And if there are any members of the White Plains Church who are present here today, go ahead and raise your hand. I see some hands being raised. And we thank God for you for coming to support Pastor Dowding today. Good, I'll wait. Go right ahead. Now, Pastor Dowding 
has uh, some hobbies that I believe are very interesting and you need to know. His hobbies include home repairs, and this is do-it-yourself repairs. Are you with me, everybody? His hobbies include reading, writing, and soccer, and also swimming. Now, we thank God for him, and I know that God will bless this church through the instrumentality of his servant. If you will, once again, I know you won't get tired of joining me in a sustained moment of appreciation and affirmation of your new and incoming pastor. Come on, put your hands together for him. Thank you very much. Pastor Dowding is married to Jasmine Anita, and they have four wonderful children, Serena, Jonathan, Jasmine, and John Emmanuel. Now, Serena is a respiratory uh, physiologist, and she has hobbies that include reading, singing, interior design, hiking. Uh, these are wonderful hobbies, and uh, when you get to know uh, the family, you will uh, be uh, joined to them through these various areas of interest. Jonathan is a musical artist, and his hobbies include writing music, reading, discussion, and debate. Now, Jasmine Rayner is in college doing psychology, and her hobbies include traveling, music, and reading. And John Emmanuel is in middle school, and his hobbies include reading, soccer, and geography. I don't know if you picked up that all of them love reading. Come on, somebody say amen. I am so glad for this family that loves to read. Now, Jasmine uh, is an educator. Can you recognize why they love reading? All right. She's an educator, and her hobbies include writing and Fit and fitness training. Come on, somebody say amen. Now, Sean and Jasmine are happy to follow God's leading as they serve his people here at the New Rochelle Seventh-day Adventist Church. I am very happy and delighted today representing the Northeastern Conference to present to you Pastor and Sister Doubting, as they will assume responsibilities for leadership here at this church. I invite them to come forward at this time as you will celebrate and welcome them to the New Rochelle Seventh-day Adventist Church. And if we have all our elders, all our elders who are present here, if you will join us on the platform at this time, I would be so happy for that. I'd be so happy for that. Now, Pastor, it is my responsibility to speak directly to your pastor and also to share a word of charge to you as a congregation. Pastor Doubting, you are God's chosen vessel for the transmission of the gospel. The Lord has set you aside for holy use and has prepared you for the extraordinary task of leading this great congregation. Your role is to equip the body of Christ with a transformative gospel that will prepare this congregation for Christ's imminent return. I charge you to always keep in focus the unique message entrusted to God's remnant church. Always remember that we are living in the closing moments of Earth's history. So I charge you to preach the whole counsel of God. Cry aloud 
and spare not. I charge you to emulate the manner of Christ, remembering that the Savior came to serve and not to be served. Therefore, humility and an attitude of service must characterize all that you say and do. Serving in the ministerial office is a privilege and not a right. I charge you to experience the joy of salvation continually. Each day be revived and refreshed by walking with God as you study his word. Always pray earnestly for insight and vision. Let God direct your life and the affairs of this congregation. I charge you to love the people in this church and in this community. Remember Christ commands us to love one another. Love them as Christ loves you unconditionally and wholeheartedly. Share their joys, share their sorrows, share their burdens, share their faith. Share off yourself with this congregation and allow them the privilege to love you. I charge you to remember the Sabbath day to keep it holy. Six days shalt thou labor by study and preparation to feed the flock. Preach the word in season and out of season. Be a nurturing pastor who preaches and teaches. Take time to nurture the flock gently as God's under shepherd. Never stop or never stoop rather to be a howling. But always remember that you are God's shepherd for this flock. I charge you to live a life worthy of your high calling. Do not be corrupted by power, pride, or impropriety. I charge you to be a Seventh-day Adventist minister. Be faithful in proclaiming the distinctive teachings of the Seventh-day Adventist Church. The sanctuary, the Sabbath, the state of the dead, the second coming, the spirit of prophecy. Allow those to be marks of your preaching and your teaching and your leading. I charge you to live and promote health reform, holistic living, godly stewardship, and the merits of Christian education. I charge you to make time for your family. Make time for leisure. Make time for recreation. Enjoy your family and give them time to enjoy you. Remember, you need to come apart and rest. Because if you do not come apart and rest, you will certainly come apart. May the God of hope, may the God of peace fill you as you trust him. And may you overflow with the power of the Holy Spirit as you serve this awesome congregation. Now, my brothers and sisters, having spoken to our pastor, I speak to you brothers and sisters of the New Rochelle Church. The Holy Spirit has directed the Northeastern Conference Executive Committee to appoint your new pastor here at this church, Pastor Dowding. And your pastor is called by God and recognized by the Seventh-day Adventist Church as God's anointed. Your pastor's primary responsibility is to lead the church and lead the community into a deeper relationship with God. I charge you, therefore, to support him, respecting his decision as God's directed decisions. I charge you to follow your pastor as he follows Christ. As Christ is the head of the church, your pastor is the head of this local assembly. I charge you to trust the vision that God has placed and imparted upon and in your pastor. I charge you to pray for your pastor and not pray on your pastor. Seek the Lord for continued blessings on your pastor and your pastor's family. 
I charge you to celebrate your pastor, affirm your pastor's ministry, encourage your pastor. Don't make it your duty to annoy and discourage your pastor. I charge you to celebrate his ministry. I charge you to let your pastor be himself. Don't be telling him that he needs to be like this other pastor who was here before. God made him unique and God will grant him unique visions and leadings for this church. Are you listening to me? God has uniquely gifted us. God has placed unique gifts in your pastor. So allow him to be himself. I charge you to reaffirm your personal commitment to Christ. I charge you to affirm your commitment to God's gospel and to his church. For your pastor can do a whole lot, but if you're doing nothing, nothing will happen. So let us work together so that God's kingdom can be built up in this part of his vineyard. And may the grace of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ be with you as this marriage of pastor and congregation commences today. I look forward to a great time at this church with your new pastoral family, Pastor and Sister Doubting, and the new Rochelle Seventh-day Adventist Church so that God's will be done and one day we shall hear from his lips, well done. Welcome into the joy of our Lord. This is what we hope for in this new era of pastoral leadership. If you will, my brothers and sisters, wherever possible, go ahead and stand in solidarity as we offer this prayer of dedication and commitment. Eternal Heavenly Father, what a tremendous privilege it is for us to gather here today for this time of installation and presentation of a new pastor to lead this congregation. This church that you planted here many years ago today starts a new beginning. It was not outside of your vision, O oh God. Everything was done because you allowed it in your permissive will to take place. And so today, O oh God, we come in a very special way thanking you for how you prepared your servant for this moment. We thank you for how you prepared this church for this moment. We thank you, O oh God, that even as they merge today, the converging of preparation that you will allow that this merging will be met with great success. May your people be motivated. May your church be lifted. May there be revival and renewal in this place. Oh God, I pray that you will lay your hand upon your servant. I pray, God, that you will grant him wisdom, knowledge, understanding, so that as this church moves forward under his leadership, it will be recognized that he is listening to you. I pray for his wife. I pray, God, that you will continue to give her the strength, the courage necessary to give support to her husband. And I pray, Heavenly Father, that as they continue to grow together in love and as they continue to share that love with this congregation, men and women, boys and girls will recognize not only that you're coming soon, but that you love them individually. I pray for the leadership of this church. I pray that you will be with each one, that you will strengthen them, that you will guide them, that you will direct them so that as they plan and make projects and make visions and values for this church, oh God, that everything will meet with heaven's approval. 
ultimately, it is our desire to go home with you. So that on that day when you shall come, we pray that we will hear from your lips, well done, good and faithful servants, enter into the joy of thy Lord. We submit ourselves to you and ask God that now you will consecrate your servant for this time, for this season. And when all is said and done, may your name be given honor, praise, and glory. Because we pray with thanksgiving, let everybody who love the Lord say amen. amen. Say amen again. And if you don't mind, one more time, join me as we celebrate our new pastor here at this church. Our pastor has elected to make his response when he rises to preach that word. And I'm sure that God has laid something upon his heart today. I can't wait to hear from the man of God. Elder, thank, thank you. you so much for welcoming me and thank you for welcoming our new pastor. Amen. It is your time for response. Praise the Lord. Thank you. Thank you so much, Pastor Morris. Uh, just before you, you, you you're going to stand here for a little while. I just want to let you know. I'm going to invite the uh, elders so they can go back to their seats. And as they're going, I'm going to ask the clerks and the staff to please come forward. We have just a few things to give you. <laughs> we are so grateful that the Lord has blessed the New Rochelle Seventh-day Adventist Church with this family. We are so grateful that God has decided that the union of this pastoral family and this New Rochelle Seventh-day Adventist Church has met pleasing agreement in his eyes. So with our hearts open and ready to serve, we join with you and become family members just a little bit closer. So we're grateful today to give you just a few things to welcome you here to the New Rochelle Seventh-day Adventist Church. As they come, I'm going to invite Elder Destin to please come forward. Brother Salmon, the head deacon, to please come forward. Elder Richardson, please, to come forward. Brother Salmon, please stand close to the pastor. Then Elder Destin and then Elder... Just watch the response. There you go. The first thing you're going to receive are the keys to the church. <laughs> and you're standing next to your head deacon. Now these keys, although they open those doors, they symbolically do much more. They open the keys to your parishioners' hearts. And we, with those keys, as you use them, again, join our hearts with yours. As we not open, we don't just open the doors for ourselves here, but for the community around us. And we look forward to what God is going to do through this ministerial family and this union. So, Brother Simon, please present the keys to the church in our hearts to our dear pastor. Pastor, I, I too joined the church in welcoming you. And I remember reading in the Bible where Caleb, when they were dividing up the land in Israel, he did not ask for the, for the plain. He asked for the hill country. So I now present you the key to the hill country. <laughs> amen, amen. Next is Elder Destin. She is our prayer coordinator. And if, if, if you need somebody to pray for you, as much as you can pray, you call on Sister Destin. And she's going to pray. But not only is she going to pray for you, She's going to get everyone that you see here involved in prayer. So we're very grateful. She has a very special gift to you that is gifted to you from our previous pastor, Elder Destin. Pastor, I welcome you. This bag that I have, it has a scroll in it. It has a scroll that Pastor Baldio used for the four years that he spent here. 
he, he prayed for every member. Every member's name is on this school. Not only the members of the church, their family members, their friends, and also the New Rochelle community. I had this for the two months before you came in, so I did do my part. I did pray on everybody's name on this school. So today is my privilege to turn the school into your hand and trust that you will do what you have asked to do by praying for every member of this church and the New Rochelle community. And I know that your prayers will be heard and answered. Amen. Amen. And last but certainly not least, Elder Richardson. He, now, what he has isn't necessarily so tangible, but it's a very powerful thing indeed. And it's something that I personally know that you love very much, and that's technology. Take it away, Elder. <laughs> Yeah, it's in my head, so um, when we find time, I'll definitely give you all that information. But it is a great privilege to be a part of the, the great commission of taking the gospel to the world from New Rochelle through the computers, through the wires, through internet. And I know that that's one of your sweet spots. That's yeah. probably one of the last thing you do before you go to bed. <laughs> one up. But I am privileged to be a part of what we will and can do here through God's power in taking the Gospels to the community and through to people's hearts and homes. So I am ready and able to be your servant. Praise the Lord. Now this is not uh, typical, but I'm going to ask every former member of Pastor Dowdings to please stand. Those of you from White Plains or wherever you're coming from. We want to thank you for being such a positive influence in his life up to this point. We thank you for your friendship and your love. And we pray that it never stops. And we thank you so much for being here to help us welcome our new pastor, your old friend. So please give them another round of applause. But I'm gonna ask you to please remain standing <laughs> because the rest of us are going to stand with them. Please, everyone stand. And yet one more time, Pastor Morris, we're gonna affirm him yet again. Please let us give this family a round of applause. May God bless you, may God bless you, may God bless you real good, and welcome to the New Rochelle Seventh-day Adventist Church. Let's just go right in and say, There's no other name like Jesus. It's the sweetest name. Yeah, in all. It. Tis the angel's joy. Tis the angel's joy in heaven. Tis the Christian's joy below. There's a sweet name. There's no other name like Jesus 
when the heart is free and glad. Oh, sweet name, sweet name, there's no other name like Jesus. Dear name, sweet name, there's no other name like Jesus. Tis the hope that I shall see. to save with power to save can we say there is only one name say it let's go there is only one name there is only one name there is only one name with power to with save power to save with power with power to save
they say just want to be with you just want to be with you if that's your desire this morning say that king of glory say king of glory fill this place just want to be just want to be with you just want to be just want to be and with one voice yes the world with one voice yes the world will bow down and say you are god bow down and say you are god Say. We'll bow down and say you are here. So let's start right now. So let's start right now. Why would we wait? Why would we wait? We can praise you now. We can praise you now. In victory. In victory. King of glory. King of, King of glory. glory. Fill this place. Fill Fill this place. The world will bow down, will bow down and say you are God. Every man, every man will bow down, will bow down and say you are King. So let's start right now. So let's start right now. Why would we wait? Why would Again. Yes, we'll dance in your presence until you come again. Say that. So we'll sing hallelujah until you come until again. You come again. And we'll dance in your presence. And we'll dance in your presence until you come again. Presence. As we'll dance in your presence, 
sweetly King of glory fill this place just want to be with you just want to be with you Pleasant good morning to everyone. Let me say first of all, thanks to Pastor Ainsworth Marsh, representing the office of the president, for this moment of installation. It is indeed an honor, an honor to be installed by you. I'd like to thank the administration of the New Rochelle Seventh-day Adventist Church, Elder Dalton and the elders, and all the members for their prayers, their support, and also for this opportunity to work together. I must say I have been surprised by the members of First White Plains. <laughs> so good to see you. Uh, I did uh, think it was uh, Brother James, <laughs> and then I saw Dr. Mario, so I said, yes, it is. And so good to see you. I saw Lucretia, and um, good to see you, Sandra. And uh, our good friend there who was in our praise team, if I am looking well, yes. And uh, our friends from the administration of First White Plains, I see you, David, I see Sister Webb, Audrey, I see Sister Gordon, Elder Ricketts, I see our Elder Richardson, Pastor Ivor Richardson. And I think I'm missing some others that I might not have seen, but I just want to thank you so much for being present this morning. I just want to say to the members and young people of New Rochelle Seventh-day Adventist Church, this is a privilege and an honor to serve you. I come because I want to work with you and I come knowing that you want your church to grow you want your church to rise you want your church to fulfill the calling of the Lord Jesus Christ to reach human beings online and in person to reach the community of New Rochelle and to bring our friends and family members to Christ. I do recall Brother Gordon on the, the drums when he would come and play for us at White Plains. Good to see him still there. And I pray that the Lord will continue to bless him and his family. Now, the time is far spent, but I just want to share the Word of God with you this morning. So I invite you to bow your heads as we pray together. Father in heaven, we come in the mighty name of Jesus. We have nothing to bring but ourselves. We make the decision to submit ourselves to you this morning again 
and ask that you will bless and keep us that your face will shine upon us and that you will be gracious unto us as your word is spoken may the power of your Holy Spirit fall on each heart is my prayer in Jesus name amen this morning my title is cancel it and live cancel it and live now as you know as Seventh-day Adventist and those who are sympathizers with the Church of God you may be just friends and of members and family there is a basic theological thesis that comes with a problematic first of all the Bible says in Romans 3 and verse 23 that all human beings have sinned and fallen short of the glory of God and in that thesis it says that Paul as he describes in Romans 6 and verse 23 that the wages of sin is death but the gift of God is eternal life when we go back in this thesis to the beginning we have a position between God and ourselves because there is someone his name is Satan the devil that old scoundrel God has placed opposition between him and us that opposition is Jesus and there is no human being who goes in this world without the feeling of shame and guilt and the conviction of sin because God has placed opposition enmity between God and mankind between the devil and mankind so what am I saying to you this morning is that there is many of us there are many of us we walk around with phone in our hands we have the world at our fingertips we manage millions and billions of dollars and we don't care because men and women beckon at our call they respond to all commands that we make but no money no luxury no power can take away the opposition between you and the devil God himself has made it plain that there is what we will call guilt and shame it's like a stealth bomber you don't see it you don't hear it you only feel it when it breaks your soul you know I remember reading in the pandemic this young man who said that my dad had all the money in the world but that could not save him COVID took him out of this world and for those who are careless and are caught guilt rushes in like a tiger it seizes and grips your conscience have you ever felt your heart swelling with guilt the pain of your conscience knowing that your life is condemned because of sin sometimes we are strong enough we are strong-minded enough we can resist the guilt and the weight and the penalty and we feel as if everything is okay but sin condemns the law condemns and we all need a deliverance the problematic we have this morning is that God is not obliged to forgive you sister chambers God is not obliged to forgive do you hear what I'm saying this morning God forgives because he's gracious 
God forgives because his character impels him to forgive the one who requests, who desires forgiveness, who requests forgiveness. God desires to forgive the sinner who calls upon him. You know, when Moses wanted to see who God was, he said in Exodus chapter 34 and verse 6, the Lord passed before him and the Lord proclaimed, the Lord our God, he is merciful and gracious, long-suffering and abounding in goodness and in truth. God in his character is moved with compassion when we ask for forgiveness. I am preparing the stage that as we move forward, we can understand what it is that we must cancel and live. The Bible tells us in Lamentations chapter 3 and verse 22, Through the Lord's mercies we are not consumed, because his compassions fail not. They are new every morning. Great is your faithfulness. You know, there is something about guilt and shame. And all of us have felt it before. Whether as a child, a young person, or an adult, or even someone of the golden age, we desire that guilt and shame be taken away from us. When Moses, rather when Abraham, wanted to ask God, we did not spare Sodom and Gomorrah, he argued with God, if there are 50 within the city, would you not spear this city? And God said, if I find 50, I will spear the city. Literally, the word spear means to take away. It means to forgive. It literally means to lift up. God says, I will cancel, I will lift up the condemnation upon Sodom and Gomorrah if I find anyone righteous within that city. And so God did not. Sodom and Gomorrah was destroyed. God did not find in that city righteousness God desires righteousness and for righteousness to be practical in our lives we must have cancelled in our lives be lifted up in our lives from the guilt and the shame of our past and of our sins Brothers and sisters, I want to share with you this morning the story of Luke chapter 7, verse 36 to 50 of Mary Magdalene as she anoints the feet of Jesus. And as she anoints the feet of Jesus, Simon the host thinks that Christ doesn't know who this woman is because he allows her to anoint his feet. But the focus of Christ as he read the heart of Simon, is not to talk about Simon's guilt. Because the shame of Simon is that he was the one who brought her down. He was the one who caused her to be weighed down with the sin and the shame of her town. God didn't stop there with Simon but he spoke to Simon's heart without revealing the shame and the blame and the guilt and he said to Simon in verse 46 you anointed you did not anoint my head with oil but this woman my feet with fragrant oil I say to you therefore her sins which are many listen to me church her sins which are many now i want you to note that god took the time to speak publicly about the sins of the woman and not those of simon 
Simon was guilty. Simon had weighed down on him the sin and shame of his wickedness and his evil heart. But in his heart, he was not ready for forgiveness. In his heart, he was not asking for forgiveness. So God could not put him to shame in public because he was not ready. But Mary was ready. Mary was ready to receive God's forgiveness. She did not care about what the public thought anymore. She did not care what anybody would say about her anymore. She was not invited, but she showed up. And Jesus knows that the tears from her eyes onto his feet were tears of shame, tears of joy, tears of confession, tears of thankfulness, tears that this man Jesus was willing to accept public repudiation to allow her to touch his feet. He said that her sin which are many are canceled do you hear what I'm saying church her sins which are many are canceled so Jesus says I can tell you about them I can talk about it I can let you know that she once had many sins but today it is canceled Jesus says they are forgiven because she loved much. Your sins and my sins can be forgiven if we love much. And when we love much, we will forgive. Jesus continued to say to her in verse 48, your sins are forgiven your sins are canceled now you can live the problem with Simon is that he hated his brother the problem with Simon is that he hated his sister the problem with Simon is that he didn't think much of Mary Jesus showed Simon that it is not compatible to be in the spirit of forgiveness and to hate someone at the same time. Do you hear what I'm saying, my friends? John the Beloved in 1 John chapter 3, 13 to 15 tells us that it's impossible. It is impossible to be in life with God and to hate your brother or your sister. John goes further by saying this is a fact. He goes further by saying this is no conditional. He goes on by saying he who does not love his brother abides in death. There is no condition. This is a factual statement. Whoever hates his brother is a murderer. And you know that no murderer has eternal life abiding in him. So here is what Jesus is doing with Simon. Here is what John is explaining to us today that there are causes and effects. You hate, you kill. You do not forgive, you kill. You do not love, you kill. There is no middle ground between love and hate. Do I have to say that again? There is no middle ground in the book of 1 John chapter 3 between love 
and hate. It's either you love or you hate. It's either you are with Christ in love or you are with the enemy and you hate. You know, many of us uses the excuse in Luke chapter 17 and verse 3. <laughs> Bishop. Luke chapter 17 and verse 3 is used as an excuse not to forgive. Let's turn to Luke chapter 17. Luke chapter 17. Luke chapter 17. Let me find it here. The Bible says, Take heed to yourselves. Take heed to yourselves. If your brother sins against you, rebuke him. Are you with me? And if he repents, forgive him. <laughs> we are okay with if your brother sins against you, rebuke him. But we stick to if he repents, then I will forgive him. And we turn this text into a condition for forgiveness and then we begin to say I will never forgive until he confesses friends this text in Luke 17 and verse 3 has no emphasis on the if he repents the emphasis and the imperative is to forgive him. Jesus is saying when he repents, not only if he repents. Are you listening to me church? So we can never take it unto ourselves to play God and say that I hold you in bondage I hold you under the weight of your guilt and your sin and I will never release you until you confess the emphasis is on the imperative forgive him the if he repents is only when he repents but it is not saying only if he repents. But if in this case he repents, forgive him. Why do we understand that? Friends, if you say to your brother or your sister, I will never forgive you. You got to confess first, you are playing God. What if that person is locked up in their sin and shame for so long and for, for so much weakness? They have no desire, no force, no moral fiber to come and ask for forgiveness. You would keep that person under the bondage of sin all that time. But if you say to the person, my brother or my sister, I don't know what is in your heart at this moment. But what is in my heart is that God loves his children. And I have received forgiveness of God. And I in turn forgive you. You don't have to know if the forgiveness and the confession and the repentance of the person is sincere. You're not God. We are not God. We don't have to determine if this is true and sincere confession. Then I forgive. Jesus says, 
forgive. Let me be more clear. Matthew chapter 18. Matthew chapter 18. Peter comes to Jesus. Peter comes to Jesus in Matthew chapter 18 and verse 21. Then Peter came to him, Jesus, and said, Lord, how often shall my brother sin against me? And I forgive him up to seven times. Jesus says, I do not say up to seven times, but up to 77 times. 70 times seven. Christ is saying to Peter, if he sins against you and he comes and says, I'm sorry, whether you believe it or not, you are to forgive him. And if he comes back at 10 o'clock in the morning and he sins against you, you are to forgive him. And he comes at 12 o'clock and sins against you and ask for forgiveness Jesus says you are to forgive him it doesn't matter how many times it's not a mathematical calculation it's not an attitude it's about your heart are you in the spirit of Christ that says love your neighbor as yourself Jesus said to the woman in Luke chapter 7 to whom little is forgiven, that person loves little. You didn't get that. The capacity of your love. The capacity of your love is determined on how much you have been forgiven. So therefore, when you refuse to forgive, you are putting in prison someone who cannot express the experience of forgiveness, which is love. And then in turn, you become a murderer. Because you are killing your neighbor softly. Killing me softly without your love. My brothers and sisters, I want to say to you today, as we come to a close, that as a church, the number one lethal weapon that members use against members is unforgiveness. The worst state that you can find yourself in is to be in a state of unforgiveness. And it doesn't matter if you have gone through the process of saying to the brother or the sister, I forgive you, if in your heart you have not forgiven that brother, if in your heart you have not forgiven that sister, you are being held captive by the enemy of your soul. And so Jesus proposes the solution. Jesus says we must repent. I tell you that unless you repent, you will likewise perish unless you repent and be converted that your sins may be canceled Jesus says if you do not forgive your brothers and your sisters I will not forgive you Matthew 6 13 to 15 if you do not forgive I will not forgive but as you are forgiven God is forgiving all your sins as you are giving forgiveness offering forgiveness to your brothers and to your sisters 
God is forgiving your sins. The spirit of forgiveness is the spirit of love. It is the spirit of Christ. It is the spirit of life. It is the spirit of eternal life. It is the spirit that abides within us. It is the spirit that convicts us of our sins and tells us we are wrong. And so we turn to God. We turn to our brother and we say, my brother, my sister, I'm sorry for the wrong that I've caused you. And even if you feel that you are right, say you are sorry. Release from the prison of unforgiveness the person with whom you contend the request my friends must be made plain that God is merciful merciful and gracious long-suffering and abounding in goodness and truth and God says I want you to know that there is one thing I deal with sin. There is one thing I do with sin. There is one thing I do with sin. I cast it into the depths of the sea. I remove it as far from me from, as from the east, from the west. I cast them behind my back. I blot them out and I forget them. God's forgiveness, my friends, reminds us that the Christian can only entertain the spirit of forgiveness do you want to be a murderer or do you want to live with eternal life do you want God to cancel your sin cancel then the brother's sin do you want God to cancel your sin and give you eternal life? Cancel the brother's sin and the sister's sin and grant them the experience of your love and let them live. We have not passed from death into life unless we love one another. We cannot experience the love of God unless we forgive one another. My friends, this is a very short way of saying to you as a church, if you want to see yourselves grow individually, make sure that every day of your life you pronounce the words, I forgive you. If you want to see God working in your life, make sure that there is no one from whom you're withholding, canceling their guilt and their shame. And then you must turn to God. We must turn to God while God is forgiving and merciful. He cannot forgive you unless you forgive your brother. While God is loving and merciful and forgiving, He cannot cancel your debt unless you're willing to forgive. But if you're willing to forgive, He will gladly. He's faithful and just to forgive the one who confesses. God will wipe clean your slate and that burden of guilt and unforgiveness will leave you and you will be free. Your heart will be light. Then you will be at peace with others, with yourself and with God. Church, I want to invite you that from here forward, if you have been doing it before, praise God. But from here forward, let us live together. Let us work together as one family, lifting up the name of Christ, canceling the debt of each other, canceling the shame of each other, canceling the offense of each other, forgiving each other, lifting up each other, and working together for the master Christ Jesus. I invite you, dear friends of New Rochelle, if this is your desire, I invite you to stand. If it's your desire to work with God 
for us to work together as a family for us to work together for the cause of God for us to work together as brothers and sisters working together loving each other it doesn't matter what has happened right now what matters is what we do now with each other what spirit animates me now you see the glories of the past cannot save us the good things we have done in the past cannot save us what saves us is our relationship with God right now right now so we are starting anew is there a brother or sister that you know you need to say my brother my sister I forgive you is there someone to whom you know that you need to say my brother my sister I forgive you then make haste and do it make haste and cancel it make haste and lift that brother or sister out from the gutters of death and take your soul out of the gutters of death and live for Jesus live for Jesus live in peace with each one it doesn't matter what the other may do to you let your heart be at peace with God and with mankind cancel it my friends cancel those offenses cancel those things that are holding you back cancel those things where you cannot see the brother walking down the same aisle cancel those things where you cannot sit in the same bench with the other person cancel them my friends and let us live for Jesus for God will bless this church God will bless this church and as a matter of fact he's already blessing this church blessing this church because he knows there's someone here today someone listening online who has made up their minds that they will cancel the offense caused upon them they will forgive and be forgiven they will love and be loved and they will work together in the Spirit of Christ let us bow our heads my friends father in heaven this is a small way for us today to say we love you father God this is a small way for us to say we have been burdened with unforgiveness we have been shattered in our lives our hearts are swollen with unforgiveness but today Jesus I want to say that was then today Jesus I want to say that was the past because now in the name of Jesus I forgive I forgive you forgive me pardon me and let's live together in the name of Jesus let the church say amen I amen. speak life you're gonna live oh my brother my sister I speak life you are the head and not the tail you will prevail I speak life don't give up the fight for your life you shall
speak life you're gonna live oh my brother my sister i speak life you are the head and not the tail you will prevail i speak life fight for your life you shall live and not die you shall live and not die you shall Pastor Dowden, thank you. Welcome again, Pastor Dowden, Sister Dowden. Welcome to our illustrious church. <laughs> you will see more of us. <laughs> so we're blessed to have you. And we have so many years ahead of us. We're blessed. Sister Dowden, you look really nice today. <laughs> All right, church, welcome again. It's so good to see you guys from White Plains. Welcome again. And other members, welcome, welcome. Sister Burton and Sister Anglin, it was so good to see you today. As well as so many of our own members. Willane, welcome. Daniel, welcome. It's good to see you guys again. We have some uh, announcements. At 4.30, please do not forget, on Zoom, we have our Sabbath school at 4.30. Elder Melvin William, um, Audubary, sorry, is going to be leading out at 4.30. Elder Melvin Audubary and friends will be facilitating at 4.30, so please tune in. Um, again, Sister Dale Backus and the community group have some goodies for those of you guys when you're exiting out through this side or this side. There will be some goodies in forms of some masks and some lotions and whatever cases, so please make sure you get yours on your way out. And because today will not end without a beautiful fellowship lunch, you guys are all invited to a welcome lunch on behalf of the New Shell Church to welcome our new pastor and Sister Delvin. So please join us after service for lunch, and we will see you guys again at 11 a.m. next week. Have a blessed Sabbath, everyone. Take care, everyone. activities here for the kids um, every Sabbath. Um, so many fun activities for them to do um, at AJY, um, generally from birth to 13. So uh, we do coloring, um, you know, just kind of keeping them busy, entertained, talk about God, and they love it. I like New Rochelle Church because it gives kids a good education about God. I love going here on Sabbath because Sabbath is my favorite day because we get to learn about God the most. So come on out, bring the kids along, you'll have a great time. Every day we get what we want, but God only gets one day, so we should keep that whole day for Him.